This week, Alex keeps up with fairing the deck around the housetop, and it won't be too long before they're mocking that up around the big hole in the middle of the boat here. And Steve will make the last of the two hanging knees and works on finishing the deck beams for the cockpit. Well, here they are. Uh, I finished installing the bolts in the very bottom this morning. We are missing a couple of bolts. Um, we started running out of rod to make the fin heads, so I got to put some in the, the middle there, so I got to make that when those come. And then uh, we started running out of uh, nuts and washers, so we need some of those as well. Um, so those things are on their way, and uh, we'll finish all that up once those come. But Man, I am so excited with how this came out. This looks really cool back here with these huge knees and uh, just the way it starts to just look like a space now. Um, you know, seeing the knee here, 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 and up forward, it just very much is drawing everything together. So at this point, I just have a little bit more fairing to do on the deck, um, just a couple finishing touches, and I'm gonna start working on mating the sill plate for the house. So there's gonna be a sill plate along the carlins and a sill plate along the edge over here. Um, and once that is done, Steve and I can start working on a house side mock-up, which is gonna be really cool to see with this thing sticking out um, and actually see what the space is gonna look like and be able to climb in and out of it. Um, so a lot of really fun things coming up. First step in marking out these short beams, it's pretty simple. Um, figure out exactly where you want it. So with that, I'm lining it up with the frame back here, trying to make sure it's square to the center line, but that I'm also not gonna hose myself with the knee that goes in here. Um, Cause when we put the deck in and you bung the deck, you're gonna see lines of bungs. So if these are off by like a little bit, you won't notice, but if for one of the reasons these deck beams ended up kind of crooked, structurally, it wouldn't really matter. Um, but you would see that weird line of bungs in the deck. It would look real funny. So once I figured out exactly where I wanted it, it's clamped back here to the shelf and that allows it to sit at the correct angle. Um, so this will sit just like a little bit cocked. And so I scribed next to it to get its width. And I took the ruler here and just held it tight to it and scribed it. And that angle changes as you go down the boat, as the shear changes a little bit. And that just cocks these deck beams ever so slightly. Uh, and it makes it so that there's a little bit less that we have to fare off. Uh, and we also don't have to fit the other end against the, um, the shelf. It just butts right up against it, which is nice. And cutting these at a tiny little angle is, is no skin off the nose. Um, so the top's marked and the bottom's marked. Now I can get this out of the way and we can get that mortise cut um, or the notch cut where that short beam will sit into. So I 
here's the template that we've been using. And this has been working pretty well. I went through a couple of renditions of it. And what I was playing with was these angles. And what I found is if you cut this with the saw, you can cut a straight line. So you can hit the tip here, you can hit the tip here, and that'll be a straight saw cut. Then you just have to carve out this little corner. So this whole run, this whole line gets cut with the saw. And then you just carve in and up for this little corner for the rest for the deck beam to nestle in. Um, now before, I didn't have this angle so that it was one straight saw cut. And you had like a different measurement up here for the mortise CO2 two and a different measurement for the saw cut. And it was kind of inefficient. Um, so by just straightening that out, it made this a lot easier. And then I've got a scribe line squared across. So that's the depth. So let me throw that on there. there. It's a handy straight edge. Now I just got to take the saw and connect that dot, that corner with that corner, that corner with that corner, and remove the middle. I'm going to cut just inside of the lines and that way the beam won't quite fit and we'll just shave the sides of the beam a little bit to get it nestled. And I'm also not going to cut quite to this line here and we'll fit the beam and see how that goes and we can always make this a little bit farther if we have to. So in this one here my line on the side and my line on the top didn't quite meet so I went with the line on the inside because uh, it's very easy just to shave a tiny little bit off the end of the short beam to nestle it in there and that 32nd of an inch, 64th of an inch that we're going to end up shaving off is not going to structurally make any bit of difference. Much better to have this a little too narrow than too wide. Once we've connected the dots, take the pattern. Just put it in there. We're just going to mark the height of the shelf. I'm going to go off the bottom here. So now I just gotta take my chisel, I'm gonna plunge in at the line here, and then I'm gonna come back to the top and carve down and carve in from the sides and just make that little bit there. So this line is about where that shelf needs to be. And I'm gonna come in a little bit above it. Just plunge in. So the shelf I'm trying to make here is just a bit over a quarter of an inch. Um, and when I'm cutting above the line, I want to cut maybe 3 16 in. Basically I want to cut less in because I know I'm above the line. And as I go to fit this and as I go to fit the short beam, I'm going to drop that shelf until the bottoms are nice and flush here. Um, and as that shelf drops it's going to end up getting deeper. So I want to make it a bit smaller than I know it's going to end up being to account for that. Just a little high. And this top needs to come back a little bit more, but it's really, really close. Uh, so now I'm going to grab the, the short beam, get that to nestle in there, and then we'll just start playing with this and minor adjustments to the short beam that we have to until it sits down nice and tight. So, as you can see, I didn't quite go in there. A few light taps like that. I don't know if you can see, but I'm rubbing right there. I'm rubbing right there. So you can see where to take those off a little bit. OK, 
Okay. So, it fits down in there now. Now I gotta check the bottom here. So this could come down a little bit more. And it needs to go in more. And I can see, if I look in the back here, this top's open and the bottom's tight. So I gotta change that angle by about 3 16 So, we need to come down probably till this line's about gone. And then the back side in here needs to go back about 3 16 And then we should be pretty close to fitting. So it took me a little while. It's uh, been out of practice. I got into a pretty good groove when I was cutting them. Um, this one was a little slower, but it fits well. I'm not gonna bother sanding or anything right now. I'm just gonna clamp it down well in place. Go do its mate on the port side. And then we can get to fitting the knees here. And once I have the knees fit and that's all good, I'll go through and probably do the rest of the short beams in here. Um, and then get everything sanded and, and sealed and done. So we'll see if I can pick up the pace on the next one a little bit. And as you can see, this is proud. That's on purpose. All of these short beams are cut a little bit fat and we'll fare through them. Alex is almost done fairing around the house uh, and we'll make all that nice and purdy. I'm just gonna hold this knee in place and I'll clamp it and then I'll get like my block put underneath it and I can just wedge it up by myself after that but your help for the first one would be great. Gotcha. Yeah it's just however that seems to fit best in there.
the uh, fiddly fitting. Pull a bunch of measurements, take it out, do some work, put it back in, and sneak up on it. My first moves are going to be to move it up so that it's riding against the bottom of the shelf. And then after that, I'll kind of start sliding it back into place and take the wood off where it needs to come off. And hopefully it won't take too, too long. These aren't gigantic and the shape isn't crazy, so it shouldn't be too terrible. Um, and I definitely won't finish them today, but probably by the end of the day tomorrow, I should have both of these all fit in here nicely and be moving on to some more pieces. All right, so here we are. I have been working on fairing out the deck around the housetop. And the reason for that is, is that we now need to lay a sill on this entire opening. The sill is gonna sit on the deck framing here and then we're gonna build the housetop off of it. So what we needed to do right now was to make sure we squared this up, but also make sure that this is um, fair through. Um, and that is gonna be really important because once we start building the housetop off of it, if this isn't square, the housetop is either gonna start building out this way or start building out this way. So that's done. Now I need to grab the pieces that Steve had cut a while ago um, and make sure that they can sit fair down on this. So I'm gonna to have to mate them down to the surface as best I can. Uh, it doesn't need to be amazing because this is not gonna see any water really. The sill plate is gonna sit here and the deck is gonna run against it and it's going to be cocked right in through here. So no water is gonna be able to uh, get in this way. And then the house top is going to be um, epoxied together with laminations. So I just need to get this fairly close. And then the last thing is going to be working on the joints here where they overlap. There's gonna be a half lap joint here, which is gonna be a little bit funky because of the angle coming down here and the angle coming here. Uh, but I'm gonna leave that till the end. So that is a future Alex problem, as Steve would say. <laughs> it's kinda of cool being able to come sit in the cockpit. <laughs> all right. I got all the knees done. So the last two here, they're gonna help support the cockpit. They are fit. I still have to drill them and sand them, but that is all easy. The hard work is over. So that is uh, eight hanging knees, I think. Two, four, six, eight, actually 10 with the two that Alex put in. Uh, so 10 hanging knees that should definitely do the trick uh, and lodging knees. So now that those are fit, I'm gonna start working on a bit more of the aft deck structure here. And that way we can do a sand and a seal and a varnish on a whole bunch of timbers all at the same time. So the next step is I've gotta find the timber for the mizzen blocking here. The plans call for a deck step mizzen mast, but the new motor is way smaller than what the plans call for. So we've got it, it's set back quite a bit farther than they have on the drawings. It's just such a smaller motor. So I think I'm gonna cut this here and put in a big block, kind of like we did up at the stem for the main mast. And eventually we'll cut a hole through it and the mizzen will go right through the deck and step down on the keel. It's just a much, much stronger way of doing it. And since we can make it work, I figure why not? Uh, so that won't be too big of a deal, but I gotta get that block and get all that prepped before I cut into anything there. Uh, I've got the pattern for the short beams here. So I've got four more of those to find and to make that'll go around the cockpit. And then I've got our deck beam pattern for the aft part of the boat here. And I've got a few deck beams and one more hatch to frame in in the aft section between the rudder and the cockpit. So now I'm gonna go open up the locust pile, and go move around in there and see what we can find. And uh, see if we can get all these prepped and then hopefully tomorrow I can spend the day just getting everything fit. Maybe you can read that, but it'll give me my four cockpit short beams. Mass blocking is in there. And it'll give me the doubled up for the stern and for the header and for the last short beam and for the carlins. So let's go knock those down to size with the bandsaw and get them through the thickness planer.
All right. So that should be all of the timbers that I need to uh, finish framing in the stern. They're all thicknessed, patterns are all traced out, and they just got to get cut out and then do the fitting. But I don't know if you can tell, it is dark out there. It is past dinner time. So I'm going to put these away, close up shop, and uh, we'll cut these out first thing tomorrow and get to fitting them. Next week, Alex will get the sill for the house all set in place, and Steve will fit the beams for the cockpit and aft hatch. And then he'll get started on blocking for the mizzen. Don't forget to hit the like button if that applies to you. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell next to the subscription button if you'd like to be notified when a new video is ready to watch. All right. Now we begin the fun game of... In and out, in and out, in and out. That sounds terrible. Don't use that, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you can use it on this one, though, Ben. <laughs> what did you say? So you can use it on this one, though, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's just the uh, fiddly fitting. Pull a bunch of measurements, take it out, do some work, put it back in, and sneak up on it.